You may recognize this image from school textbooks, t-shirts, soda adverts, and everything in between. But what if I were to tell you that if we're to be honest with the evidence that we have, this picture should look more like this? Let me explain. On the left is what is believed to be the first ape known as Proconsul, and on the right is a human called Homo sapiens. But what scientific evidence is there for everything else in this image? The transitional species. Let's find out. We'll start with Homo neanderthalensis. You might know him as Neanderthal man. Recent discoveries have shown that Neanderthal man made and wore jewelry, played instruments, used tools, and wore makeup. We've even found that his brain was the same or slightly larger than the average human living today. In other words, Neanderthal man was actually just a man. What about Homo erectus? Recent discoveries have shown that Homo erectus made tools, engaged in artwork, spoke intelligent language, and made and sailed boats. In other words, Homo erectus was also just a man. Now we'll come back to Homo habilis in a moment, but first, let me show you something. Have you ever heard of Lucy, the most famous so-called ape man, paraded in our museums, one of the very first Australopithecus afarensis species ever to be found? But what does the evidence reveal? She had a skull that was sloped and ape-like, nothing like human skulls, fingers that were curved, not at all like human fingers, toes that were curved, not at all like human toes, wrists that had the ability to lock for knuckle walking, and a knee structure that was compatible with life in trees. So Lucy and her kind swung from trees and looked like today's apes. Lucy is an extinct type of ape. As we've just seen, Homo sapiens, Neanderthal man, and Homo erectus were all men. Australopithecus afarensis and Proconsul were both apes. Considering the ubiquity of the evolutionary icon, we'd really want to see some strong evidence for Homo habilis, the pivotal point of transition between stoop ape and upright man, between basic instinct and intelligent thought, between animal noise and intelligent speech. The only problem is, in the words of Ian Tattersall, Homo habilis is a wastebasket taxon little more than a convenient recipient for a motley assortment of hominin fossils. Other scientists referred to him as a garbage bag because the bones we have for him are a mixture of human and ape bones. In other words, Homo habilis never existed. I think evolutionary professor Bernard Woods sums this up well. Our progress from ape to human looks so smooth, so tidy, it's such a beguiling image that even the experts are loath to let it go. But it is an illusion. With the lack of evidence and agreement on the ape-human transition forms, why is this not happening? Or this? And is a better explanation that man and apes have always coexisted and reproduced according to their own kind, as stated in Genesis 1.